Mikhail Baryshnikov, about to dance to an organ accompaniment, the accompaniment of his own heart. The small transmitter he is wearing is the idea of Christopher Janney, who calls himself a sound artist. Well, this is actually a device that was developed for biomedical purposes for post-operative heart patients to be able to get up out of bed and walk down the hall or do various kinds of exercises and not be connected via wires to a normal EKG machine. Jenny first put the transmitter on dancer and choreographer Sarah Rudner. She improvised movements to the audible beat created by her heart, transmitted to antennas, and amplified through speakers. Their dance invention is now being performed as a solo work by Baryshnikov. You've always danced with your heart. Have you ever danced this literally? <laughs> Not quite like that. Not quite like that. And you have to actually use uh, your heartbeat as an instrument, your body as an instrument. The instrument that is his heart plays more quickly as he moves, raising his heart rate, which sets an even faster pace for his dancing which raises his heart rate even more. Well, it goes up to probably 160, 180. Every day your heart beats slightly different. It's a lot of surprises. How much it changes your heartbeat according to your moods. It's very much interconnected to your brain. Varishnikov will turn 50 next week. He is still superbly conditioned. Yet while he never seems to miss a step, his heart will miss a beat. Much of what inventor Chris Janney calls our inner noise is irregular, arrhythmic, and there is a lot of inner noise. You also hear some of the muscles firing, which sounds like distant thunder rumbling. There's the sound of the blood rushing through the veins. There's the sound of the joints moving. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. But we rarely hear these sounds, or at least rarely listen to them consciously. Halfway through the dance piece, music begins, muting the drum of the heart. Still, it beats on, unnoticed, but vital. This sound is quite possibly the first sound we ever heard. It's what we heard in the womb. And what sounds all through a life keeping time. Beth Nissen, ABC News, New York.